So in the last class, we started with the chemical change and the physical change, right? Physical change means what? Change in the physical properties such as change in shape, size, color, taste, sorry, state. So whenever these changes are happening, it will cause a physical change. Chemical change means what? Change in the chemical properties of the substance and always will form the new product. That is a chemical change. Okay. So chemical change can be always a irreversible process. Chemical change is always a irreversible process, but physical change is both reversible and the irreversible. Some of the physical change can be reversible and some of the physical changes cannot be reversible. Okay. So this is what we discussed in the last class. So, for example, if you take this melting of the ice, is it the physical change or the chemical change? The physical change. Physical. Melting of the ice is a physical change. Okay, but if you take any ice glacier or the iceberg, sorry, if you take any iceberg, almost the 90% of the iceberg will be there below the water. Only the 10% of the iceberg you can see above the water because the ice will have the lesser density than the water. The water will have the density is one. The ice will have the density is 0 0.9. Okay. So because of that less density, the ice will start floating on the water. So only you can see only 0 10 percentage of the ice on the water and remaining 90% you can see under the water itself for every iceberg. Okay, next one is a burning of candle. So burning of candle involves both physical change as well as the chemical change. Yes, sir. So, so when you're burning the candle, whatever the solid wax is there near the wick, it will start melting, right? So some part of this wax will start flowing along the sides of the candle. That is called as a dripping of the wax. That is a physical change, okay? And some part of the wax will converting into the vapor phase so that only it will produce the light so during the burning of the wick it is called as a chemical change so whatever the wax dripping along the side of the candle that is a physical change and the wax which is burning during the process is a chemical change so burning of the wax undergoes both physical and the chemical change so whenever the wax is burning it will produce the carbon dioxide and the ash but we cannot see that much of ash around the candle because it will produce very, very little amount. But carbon dioxide gas will escape into the atmosphere. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Turn on your camera, everyone. Okay, so with that, we have finished this chapter. So just we'll revise only in the one minute for complete thing. Physical change means what? What is the meaning of physical change? Sir, physical changes are the changes that are uh, uh, changes occurs in only the physical properties, for example, in solid shape, uh, liquid gas, etc., not in uh, chemical changes in any precipitation. And also, it is, uh, uh, it is not a permanent, sir, it is temporary, which is uh, reversible. Okay. So, chemical change means what? Sir, it is unreversible change. We can't reverse it. Mm -hmm. Such as sound, color, uh, etc. And also it is uh, permanent. Uh, we cannot reverse it and it is irre irreversible. Okay. Excuse me, sir. I actually joined late. Sorry. 
Aisha? I actually joined late for some reason. Okay, okay, no problem. But uh, just now finish, finish this chapter. Physical change and chemical change. Okay, sir. Uh, next to which we are uh, starting, sir. So next we'll start with the reflection. The plans will start. Sir, reflection plans. Yeah, sir, we have an exam. Okay. So first, you know about the different plans parts, right? So if you take any plan, it will have the one minute, please. So if you take particular plan, any plan, it will have the two systems. One is the root system, the other one is a shoot system. Root system means you know whatever the part of the plant which is present under the soil that is called as a root system, and which are the part of the plant present above the soil that is called as a shoot system. Okay. So in the root system we have the different types again the tap root, lateral root. Again for the tap root we have the side roots that is called the lateral root and the root here and all will be there. So there is a tap root system is there here. Again one more root system is what fibrous root system will be there. So in the reproduction in the plants will happen in the different parts. There is a asexual reproduction, either near the leaves or the stem or the different parts of the plant. But sexual reproduction in the plants will happen in the only in the only in what part Flower. of the plant? Flowers. Good. So flowers are the only sexual reproduction part in the plants. If you take the asexual reproduction now, it can be stem or the leaves or the roots or the branch. Okay, these are the different parts. So first, what is the meaning of reproduction? The process of producing the new organisms from the existing organisms or the parents of the same species is called as a reproduction. The process of producing the new organisms from the parent of the same species is called as a reproduction. Then what is the purpose of the reproduction? What is the main purpose? Uh, sir, it's main purpose. Sir, so that the species don't get extinct. There are a lot of disturbance from the sir. That's what, if you all speak at the same time, no, nobody will understand anything. Again and again, I'm telling you in the class, if one person is speaking with the remaining person, be speak quiet. So what is the main purpose of reproduction? Sir, so that these species don't get extinct. Good. These species don't get extinct in the near future. So survival of the species, the reproduction is the main important thing, right? So next one is a mode of reproduction. You have the two types of reproduction modes are there. One is the asexual reproduction, the other one is a sexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction means what? Without involving in the male cells and the female cells. Sir, and uh, it will use only one parent cell. Sir, like only one parent is required to produce an offspring. Yeah. So, asexual reproduction means what? It does not involve in the fusion of the male cells and the female cells at all, or the fusion of gametes. Sexual reproduction means what? Fusion of these two cells, male cells and the female cells. So, the first one is a asexual reproduction. So this is a process in which only one parent is involved in the production of new individuals of the same kind is called as an asexual reproduction. So in the plants, asexual reproduction will be formed without the help of the seeds also. Okay, sorry. In the plants, asexual reproduction results in the formation of offsprings or the new plants without the help of the seeds or the spores. So asexual reproduction are the four different types. One is a vegetative propagation. The next one is a budding. The third one is a fragmentation. The fourth one is a spore formation. Yes, sir. Here we also have binary diffusion. Yeah, fusion and all will come again in the last part. 
So first, Aisha. Yes, sir. Yeah, what to remember in the vegetative propagation? What, sir? What you remembered about the vegetative propagation? It is uh, formed by roots, stems. Okay. Sir? Wait, wait. Let Aisha explain. Yeah, just can you elaborate the ex your explanation part? Yes, sir. Vegetative reproduction means uh, any form of asexual reproduction that is occurring in plants in which a few plants grow from a fragment of cutting the parent plant or um, specialized reproduction structures. Oh, next. Sir, uh, sir, vegetative propagation, sir, is a, uh, sir, it is a method in which, uh, sir, the vegetative parts of a plant are uh, cut and uh, like they are used for germination of a new plant. Okay. Next, anyone? Sir, or in short, like uh, we can also say, like we use vegetative part of plant for reproduction. Sorry? Uh, sir, it is a method in which we use uh, vegetative parts of plants for reproduction. Okay. So vegetative reproduction can be happened with the help of different process. One is the, with the help of the roots or with the help of the stem, with the help of the leaves. Right? Yes, sir. So these are the different vegetative parts are of the Plant. plants. Okay. Now you can see here. It is the formation of the new plant from the vegetative units of bird systems is pollen vegetative reproduction. So these are the vegetative propagules. So first one is the vegetative reproduction by stem. So what is this vegetative reproduction by stem? Uh, sir, like, uh, uh, they will cut, sir. They will cut and keep the another stem, so new plant Sir. Yeah. Sir, they use the stem for the reproduction. Sir, they actually cut the uh, stem. Sir, they keep it in a soil. Sir, and water it, sir. Sir, uh, now this stem which is cut, sir, will uh, like will produce roots, sir, and it will uh, become into a new plant. Sir, it occurs through stems when new plants arise from the north. Very good point. We have to cut the stem of the plant or the branch of the plant at the below the north region. So if you cut above the north region, now it will not grow first thing. So vegetable reproduction by stem or the branch. We have to cut the stem or the branch of the plant below the north region and we have to dip, keep it in the new soil so that near the north region, again, the new roots will start developing. Okay, there is a vegetable reproduction by the stem. Understanding, you can see in this picture, there, there is a north region. What is the meaning of north first? What is the meaning of nod? Ahana. What sir? Ahana Singh. Yes, sir. What is the meaning of sorry? Nod region. Uh, there are the points of attachment of leaves to stem. To the stem. Good. So the point of attachment of the leaves to the stem is the nod region. So this is the place, this is the vegetative propagation of the plant. So if you cut the stem below the node region, node region, so that when you replace the stem in the soil, now new roots will begin from that node region. So it will grow into the new healthy plant. So that is what is happening here. First one. Sorry. Sorry, voice is breaking. No, sir, it's not. No, there is no issue from my side. Is it clear now? Okay. So next one is the vegetative reproduction by the in stem by layering method. Next one is the vegetative reproduction in the stem. So by... layering is an artificial method, right? Yeah, this is artificial method only. Not exactly artificial, you cannot say, because we are just keeping the branch of the yes. plant into the soil, right? 
Yes, sir. Uh, sir, like actually keep soil above the like a part of the plant, like a branch of a plant. Sir, and like once it grows roots, sir, like the supply of food then will come from the uh, like the parent plant. Sir, uh, once it grows roots, sir, then we just cut off the connection, uh, like when it gets roots and leaves. Sir, then it can like about uh, then it will grow as a like separate plant. See, you can understand by just seeing the picture itself. Just we'll take one healthy branch of the plant. We'll take out all the leaves from the branch and we'll place the branch, some part of the branch into the soil. Okay, so after some days, what will happen? The roots began under the soil at the place where we covered with the soil. So again, it will start growing into the new plants after some days. So there is a vegetable reproduction by the stem by layering process so this most commonly you can see only in the jasmine plants that's what the jasmine will spread easily right the group as a bulk yes sir okay but if you see in the homes it will spread in the only single stem but if when you go for the fields or some uh, park area and all it will spread in the wide area how you seen this No, they're already there in the home only from past three years due to COVID, sir. Right? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, any doubts in this? No, sir. No, sir. So, next one is the grafting. It's a very, very important process because this is an artificial propagation of plant. Okay. So, what we are going to do in this grafting process? Uh, sir, in this, sir, we actually cut a uh, part of the plant slantingly, sir. Sir, and we take the top of the plant, which is called the seon. Sir, and we uh, cut it to uh, like an another plant. Sir, it may be of even like if I cut the seon of a tomato, sir, then I can even like uh, like keep it to a stalk of another uh, like uh, brinjal. Sir, then when we like when we like we just need to keep them like uh, keep them closely and wrap uh, like wrap them like very tightly, sir. Sir, and they will uh, like generate connections like uh, they'll generate connections and then they'll become one plant. Sir, can I tell? Sir, like when? Sir, yes, sir, you are speaking, but we can't hear you. Yeah, sir, something. Yes, sir, we can't hear you. Sir, like you a little bit, sir. So, next one is the grafting process. So, in the case of grafting, we'll take two different plants and we'll cut the stem of the two different plants in the some angle position. Okay. At some angle, either 45 degrees or the six, 60 degrees. And we'll join these two different branches together. So whichever the plant, which we took as a shoot system, that is called as a And whichever the plant, we took as a root system for the plant, that is called as a stalk. So Sion and stalk will join together with the help of the graft union. And just we'll take one paper or any cloth and we'll wrap it around that. So after some days, what will happen? These two pods will be joined together and the plant will start growing healthily. So this process is called as in grafting. Okay. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So it's most common in the apple, mango, rose or in the hybrid plants because if you want to produce the hybrid plants now, in most of the cases, we'll use this grafting technique also. 
Next one is the vestibular reproduction by the leaves. If you see the bryophyllum leaves, it will have the small bud-like structures. So whenever these leaves fall onto the surface of the earth, these small buds will break from that leaves and will start growing into the new plants. So it is also one of the vestibular reproduction by the plants. Yes, sir, I have bryophyllum. Okay. Yes, sir, even I have in my home. Okay. I do not have. So that. like at first, like a sir, like it used to be like very small one year ago. Sir, right now, like there are many like small bryophyllums around it, sir. Okay, because these buds are present on the leaf itself, right? The leaf will fall off yes, the. Sir. So again, each leaf will contain three or four small buds. At least one will grow healthily from each one, right? Each leaf. Sir, like mine has like almost like five, like ten buds in each leaf. Counting every day. You want some more? No, sir. Like around, sir. Like that, sir. Like around, like seven to ten. Okay, okay. Yeah, but don't grow too much of bryophyllums and all. Is there any use of that? No, sir. No, like it used to be in a pot, sir. Sir, like we just left it, sir. Sir, it's growing on its own. So next one is the vegetable production by the roots and the bulbs. You know already potatoes, right? It'll have the eyes of the potatoes. So when you cut that part of the eye and again keep it in the soil, again it will grow into the new plant and you'll get the another potato from that. So that is all the vegetable reproduction by the stems and the roots and the bulbs. So next one is the budding, which is most common in the east. So what is the meaning of budding? So in this process, the parent cell will divide into the small, small pods as a chain of buds. And each bud will grow into the, again, the bigger cell. Again, it will undergo the... Yes, sir. Sometimes, so sometimes the first bud falls, sir. Sir, but sometimes like it can also form a chain. Sir, if, uh, sir, once the weight is like more, sir, all the buds will fall down. Okay, good. So it is called in budding it is the most common in the fungi and the yeast. So you can see here that is the first yeast cell. So again, this is dividing into the di two different parts, two different parts along with the division of the nucleus. So you can see here new bud formation along with the nucleus here. So it divides like this n number of times so that after some point of time, it will break into the individual buds. So again, it will start dividing continuously. So it will happen continuously throughout the life until it get the sufficient nutrition and the favorable conditions are there, right? So next one is the fragmentation. It is also same. Whatever the parent is there, it will divide into two fragments. Again, that fragment will grow healthily. Again, after a certain point of time, again, it will break into the two more fragments. So two, 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 it will go like this. It will become N number in the last. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, sir, it is also occurring in like uh, oscillatoria. Okay. But sir is going very fast today. If you can't understand anything like that, you will tell. No, sir. Only sir, you are going so slow. Going very slow. Sir, medium. Medium. Then we'll have the compare with the train itself. Sir, for me, you're going pretty slowly. Then, which is the fastest? No, sir, it's normal. Hmm? Sir, for formation, sir. Sir, for formation, like, uh, uh, like, sir, it will be a small bubble type and it will form in bread mold and also like uh, algae. Sir, for formation is the lower part of the plant, sir. Sir? Yeah, just wait a spore minute. Yeah. So what is the spore formation? Sir, it is a method in asexual reproduction. Really? Yes. I wasn't able to hear you. Sir, can you repeat? I didn't speak anything. Sir, then she was telling it's a method of asexual reproduction. Yeah, that's correct answer only, right? Logical. Sir, like for what is she telling, sir? That I was not able to hear. Sir, uh, sir asked what is for spore formation. Okay, that. Okay. 
सर एक्चुअली दिस फोर्स फॉर्म ऑन लाइक इन अनफेवरेबल कंडीशंस सर दिस आर फॉर्म्ड टू प्रोटेक्ट द ऑर्गेनिज्म सर सर लाइक व्हेन द फेवरेबल कंडीशंस रिटर्न सर दिस फोर्स फॉल ऑफ सर रिजल्टिंग इन न्यू लाइक न्यू ऑर्गेनिज्म्स लाइक न्यू विल ग्रो ओके सो जनरली इफ यू टेक द स्पोर फॉर्मेशन यू कैन सी ऑन द डायग्राम इटसेल्फ राइट जनरली दे विल फॉर्म ऑन द ब्रेड मोल्ड्स So it will have the head legs for an GM structure will be there, which will have the thick protective wall. So during the unfavorable conditions like high wind and all, this wall will protect. But whenever this wall will burst, whatever the force are there inside, it will fall onto the bread mold again. Again, they will start growing into the new this uh, plant structure. Okay, you can see that image here on this. Yes, sir. Okay, that is about the spore formation. So with this, we have finished the asexual part of the reproduction of the plants. Next, we'll come back to the sexual reproduction in the plants. Before that, we'll see the different parts of the plant flower first, because the flower is a sexual reproductive organ of the plant. Yes, sir. Sir, yeah. So just look out for the different parts of the flower. The first one is what is the male? Sir, uh, sir, ah, uh, sir, stamen or ah uh, androecium. Oh. What are you telling, man? Sir, male reproductive part of flower. Yeah. Stamen. Sir, sir, stamen or androecium. Mm -hmm. Sir, I was telling like it's also so called as androecium. Androecium. So, yes, I mean, it is a male reproductive part of the flower, which is present inside the flower itself. So that will contain the two parts. One is the anther. The next one is the filament. So inside the anther, we have the pollen grains will be there, right? So these are the male gametes of the male reproductive. Part of the flower. The next one is the female reproductive part of the flower. It is called as a carpel. So it will contain the three parts: stigma. It is also called pistil, sir. Pistil. Pistil or the carpel. So it will contain yes, parts: stigma, style, and the ovary. So whenever the pollen grains will fall into the stigma due to the pollinating agents, it can be wind or it can be. But water, any like insects, animals, anything. So which are transferring these pollen grains from anther to the stigma. These are called as pollinating agents. So whenever the pollen grains fall into the stigma, it will slowly move towards the style and last finally fall into the ovary. So in the case of ovary, what is going to happen? These male gametes will fuse with the female gametes. What is the female gametes in the ovary? Yes, sir. Ovules. So whenever the pollen grain ovary, no ovary is the part of the female reproductive organ, right? So inside the ovary we have the pistil, pistil, pistil. Man, where is the pistil, man? Pistil is a complete reproductive female reproductive part of the. Ah, uh, female reproductive part, right, sir? Yeah. So we are discussing about the female gamete cell, that is the ovules. Okay. Oh, okay. Whenever the pollen grains, there is a male gamete of the flower, will fuse with the female gamete that is called as an ovules. So pollen grains fuse with the ovules to form the first one. What is it? Zygote, right? Yes, sir. The formation of zygote. Sir, the zygote will turn into a seed. Sir, and the ovary will turn into a fruit. Yeah. Next, we have the one more stage. Embryo is there. So again, the formation of the zygote after it will turn into the embryo, then the starting of the fruit will develop. That's a, that's what the fruit will start developing. Like a, the seeds will be the ovules, and whatever the remaining part is there, it will grow into the fruits. Okay. 
so fertilization process then what is the fertilization sir so it's a fusion of female and male parts uh, to form a structure called zygote it's called fertilization the fusion of the male and female gap is called as fertilization yes sir so we get all these points here the cells are called gametes when they combine to form the zygote that process only called as fertilization okay yes sir now oh, it is clear ritwik what about ritwik so it's clear ritwik no so this was ishan ishan i know yeah First one, what is the sepals? What is the petals? These are the different parts of the flower, right? Hmm? What is the sepals and what? Yes, sir. Sepals means what? The green color part or green color leafy like structure outside the circle of the flower is called the sepals. So all the sepals are together referred as a calyx. So what is the function of the calyx? What is the function? Sepal of the function of the sepals and calyx. No answer. Hmm. What is the function of calyx? Sir, it's uh, consisting of sub separate or fused sepals. Sir, uh, sir, it the pro sir, it protects the uh, like the flower when it's in the form of a bud. Okay. Sir, and it also helps in photosynthesis when the uh, when the, like the flower is in the form of a bud. Really? Yes, sir. Sir, because that time, like it receives the sunlight. Sir, but once the flower, uh, like, uh, sir, like it becomes big, sir, sir, like the, uh, sir, the calyx won't be able to receive the sunlight, so it won't, uh, like, I mean, photosynthesize. Sir, I got the answer. It is like it protects the inner part of the flower during development. Very good. Generally, it will protect the flower during the developmental stage from the external factor. That is the sepals. Main role of the sepals are the yes. next one is the petals. You know, these are the most attractive part of the flowers. So, different flowers will have the different color of the petals. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, in some plants, the sepals, sir, which is the calyx or the petals, which are the, which is a corolla, may be absent. Sir, one of these. Yeah. Next one is the stamen. Just now we discussed it. It is a male reproductive organ of the plant. It will have the two parts, filament and the anther. The top part is called as filament. The bottom one is called as an anther. Next one. So these anthers are these um pollen grains are generally sticky in nature. So whenever the insects come and pollen, whenever the insects come. And fly onto these flowers. These pollen grains will stick to the body of the insects or the body of the birds, and they will travel from one place to the other place. So, if you see the hibiscus plant, sorry, hibiscus flower, you can see the pollen grains and everything very clearly, right? Yes, sir, I have seen. But I have given one work during that time. Nobody has admitted that work. What is that work? Anybody remember? Sir, repeat. Okay, 
ಹೋಮ್ವರ್ಕ್ ಅನ್ನ ಅಭಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ Yes, sir, it's a flower. But I don't know really. I'll check it later. Okay, sir. So these are the. Okay, sir. Let's see. Yes, sir. Your voice is not clear to me. Yeah. ಕೆನ್ ಯು ಹಿಯರ್ ಮಿ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಲೋ ಹಲೋ Hello. Hello. I mean, what happened? Well, I cannot. Yes, sir. We can't hear you. You are not listening. Sir, we can hear you. Then please respond. 